can be a problem for a lot of people is knowing how to get around in the software. Like, I'm not here to track coming in. I'm gonna pull this down. I come to here like this, I get that idea here, right? Because I know that this is actually the overall output, right? Oh, this is A1, so this is A1 here. I come to here, it's A2. So I hit these little pads here, I can see what's going on this side. So I can know this is the overall output, but only for the output of the group or drum program. As you can see right here, this drum program right here. So I stop this here, I can press B at the same time, and I get rid of the browser. So if I want to get what's here in the middle, I go right here, and then that's gone. And we have the full grid here. If I had a lot of different tracks used, here if I had each uh, program going, I had program in A, B, C, you can see that here, we would see all these right here in the middle. Right? And I can also bring this back here too. Of course, here I have the mixer. I have my mixer right there. And it goes to the uh, another section of my MacBook Pro. So I have like an extra screen here. So that's why I go to here. I have two screens. I can go with my mixer. I go back here. I'm going to be in the work desk here. And here I'm back in the mixer. Here's my workstation here. So if I come to here also, I can go to here and I get rid of the MIDI and the audio side of it. And now my grid view here, as you can see, we're at home. I can see the wave files here. If I hit a track here, I'm going to see what a wave file looks like. I can see that wave file is going to be. I can see the list the list of all the MIDI information that goes on. I press play from the top. We'll see this little red cursor come down here and you'll see it's playing every time I stop it. This is where we stopped it at, at 70 here, right? That's a hi-hat right there. See, and these are the list, or this is the list of every note that's played. Now I can go back to grid, my grid view, and I can see that, all right? So I can press this again. I'm playing. I can go to here, bring this back. So we can do all this while we're actually making beats up. I can pull this up here and it's gone. That's my pad channel, right? So I go back to here, there's the pad joint. If I come to here, you'll see now this is a master in terms of the master output. See the king there? That king implies it's the master fader, right? So I pull this down, everything just stops. Meanwhile here, this is now just a group. If I'm here in pad, then the group is here and the pad is here. So be get used to that. Know how to get around your system in case you want to adjust the pad. I come into the pad, I know I can add effects right here. Any effect I want to, right? Let's close that out. And if I want to change that, I come to here, then I can add effects to the group. And as you can see here, there's already a limiter here on the entire group. Now, this is important for you to understand too as well. Let's say, for example, I go back to my browser and I play a sound. Let's say we pick something to play. If I play this, let me go to here, uh, not that, let's go back to here in the program. Okay, good. Let me turn it off now. Now you see when I play something in here, you'll notice that you never see it over or appear here in the master output where I have my view meter here, right? It never, it never appears there. So let's go to something. Let's go to sounds. Let's go to uh, samples. Here's samples. And I'll pick a sample to hit. Let me turn this back on, actually, right here. And you don't see any sounds appear here. That means these sounds are playing directly through the my computer, which is a MacBook Pro. It's playing directly through its audio output. It's not going through the MPC2 software. Be aware of that, because sometimes you may have to adjust your sound and make sure one sounds louder than the other. That's important to know, too. But when you get here in the system, and I'm playing a sound, let's say I go back to um, here. So we have MIDI here, right? We're in MIDI, and I want to go back to pad, right here in pad. I can see here in pad, whoa, the sound is here, right here, right? Yeah. So I can come, let's see, come down to here or anywhere else. I get to here. And you'll see that sound appear in the view meter right up here, right? That's important to know. So you know there's differences in sound output. Now I want to come back to here probably and turn this into pads. With my keyboards, now 
are the pads. So, since I'm playing the pads, I want to make sure I get this audio output going on. And so, right here, we can add effects to it. And here's our program. That's the program we're using right now. My, my program will appear here. Now, I can also come back to here again, and the program still appears there, right? I come to here again, and it's all gone. So, they're all off right here. Everything's off. I'm going to turn them on, turn them on here, I'll turn them on here either way. Now, here, of course, we have our MIDI channel. So, I would know the MIDI channel. I'm going to send something through. I may have a MIDI device I want to use. I send MIDI through here. Select the MIDI channel. Now let's go out of this again and go back to here. Let's go to here actually. And so we can see what's happening here. We have our sequence here. We have the bars. So I can change the length of the bars here. Let's pull this out more. We can see we have eight bars here. I can change the length right here. And you see there's a little, if I put the cursor there, we have an up and down arrow. I can go add more bars or decrease the number of bars. I get to here for BPM. I can increase the BPM or lower the BPM. Here again, I, I can do the here, transpose up or transpose back down. Same with the BPM, same with the bars, up or down. And it works that way. It's pretty simple to do. I can also double click on the number right here and I can insert eight right there. I'm back to eight bars. This works the same way for the BPM, the transposing, the start and the end. So we're going here to the loop. If I turn loop off, you see the little Right on top, this blue line that was there signified the loop, where it ended and where it started from. I click this again right here for loop, and loop is active again. Now also, here I'm on MIDI, as you can see, right? And you see it says sequence. This is the sequence I have here. I can change my sequences here, add a new sequence right there. Pretty simple enough to do. And here we see all default custom bars, BPM, transpose, loop, start, end, and time signature, right? So I can go to here, I wanna see default. This is my default setup, right? I can come back to here, I wanna to go to custom. And this is my custom setup. I can have all, let's click all. Now everything shows, including the time signature now. I'll go back to my custom setup, my custom setup. So you wanna set up your own custom setup when working with the MBC software here in the MIDI section. Now also here below the sequence, we have tracks. The number of tracks in a sequence, let's check this out right now. There's just one track there. I can come to here and we have our custom setup as well and a default and also I can select all. This all happens right here on the left hand side of the MPC 2.0 software. Now also, it's not just MIDI, it's also audio. I can click here for audio and now as you can see, everything has changed. We have our section here, which is a grid section, but this signifies that point for audio tracks. We have bars, we have BPM, we have transpose, loop, and we have start and end. And that's basically all you have for audio. But we do have effects right here. I can add inserts right here for audio. I see the audio outputs, one and two, which is my main output. You also see the little king icon right here. That king icon signifies, of course, the master output track. Now you see this going up and down green? That's the audio input. That's my voice going in. Let's say for example, I go back to the sampler section here in sampler, and you see the same thing right here. If I click here and I go to stereo, now we don't see anything in stereo, right? Because there's only one input. Monitor off, monitor on. Monitor off. So in mono, my system is only taking in one side, apparently the left side. I could go stereo, but you don't see that at all. Realize that when you actually start sampling. Now here I am, I'm back into the home page, but I'm still in audio. So I say in audio and I go to each section, audio remains open and each section still has some audio that could be applied to it right here. I'm still in the audio section of this, no matter what mode I go to. I go back to home right here and I'm at home and I'm still here and we can still see the audio files. If we have some here, but we would see all that here without seeing the grid. So we don't see, for example, the pads whatsoever. I'll click here. We can see the keyboard, of course. And we click here. We get rid of what's there on the left-hand side. And that's all we can do right here. I go here. That removes everything. When I press the I right there. And this is how we get around in our system on our MPC software. 
Next, we'll look at sampling.